Hey everyone, welcome back to Rabble. I'm Sean. This is Sterling. And uh, it's finally time to get around to our spoilers. Wonder Woman movie review. Hey, I'll, I'll start over. That's like, yeah, that was terrible. All right. <laughs> All right. Pretty <laughs> loud. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rabble. I'm Sean. This is Sterling. And it's finally time to get around to our full spoilers Wonder Woman review. It's been, uh, I guess, almost a week since Sterling saw it first, and then I saw it uh, on that Thursday night. Uh, there's just been a lot of stuff that kind of got in the way of it. Um, work, just being kind of lazy about getting to it, um, but it's definitely something that we've been trying to get to, and I'm really happy that we're finally getting around to it right now. There's a ton to get into, so without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, so start, like starting off, I did not know anything about the new intro that DC has before their movies, um, like leading into the start of the film with the whole... Did you see that? I don't We didn't have trailers or anything. No, no, it wasn't a trailer. It was like when, when the credits are... I mean, when the movie's starting, and it's like DC. Did you have like that whole animated sequence of all the heroes and stuff like that? Was it kind of... Was it, it didn't look super live action-y. It was like kind of... It was kind of animated. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's kind of like the Marvel one now. How they kind of have some. Like, yeah, but this is so much better. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Marvel's is cool, but it doesn't like it's not exciting because it's usually stuff that you've already seen in the other movies. This has like Batman, Superman. Then there's Green Lantern. You can oh, see like Hawkman and Hawk Girl. The Justice League and then yeah, it almost looks like a way better version, okay. an updated version of the Justice League. The Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. yeah. We have that. And yeah. Show like the whole Justice League when it zoomed out. Yeah, yeah okay. like the whole thing, not mm -hmm. just like the core seven. seven. Uh -huh. It was like sixty people on screen. Yeah, okay, yeah, we had. That. Yeah, man, that immediately set the the tone for the experience of seeing Wonder Woman. I didn't know that that was. I didn't know if they had a new one. Um, you didn't mention anything about it, but I mean that was. I completely forgot about it. Right? I could have watched that like two or three times in a row. Um, so that doesn't have anything to do, I guess, with the quality of the movie. But it was so smart of them to attach that to Wonder Woman. And I didn't personally hear anything about them doing that before Wonder Woman. Like, I didn't hear an announcement that there was going to be a new intro. And I think it was a perfect way to really kick off, this is a new phase of the DCEU. We're trying to get some things right that we didn't get right before. And it just sets a, it sets a good tone for your, your viewing audience going to the movie like that. Um, and obviously, I thought the tone carried over. I thought it was fantastic. Um, the movie it, or just the the movie, movie. yeah, oh, the Wonder Woman as a, as a as a movie overall. Overall, I I enjoyed it immensely. Like the tone, the cinematography, some of the shots in this movie are so beautiful. Um, Themyscira, the entire sequence on mm -hmm. Themyscira is just eye candy. Just color and light, um, the architecture, uh, the nature. You know, building the having their society built into the cliffside and, and then that water and even some really cool touches like um the the kind of glowing blue water that they used to heal steve trevor mm -hmm. and i love that they didn't explain everything like he was just like why does this water glow like this like it's just that's just the world that they live in i really liked the introduction to the amazon's history where it was kind of that animated painting almost like those that's old kind of yeah, Renaissance know. style paintings of Greek mythology and this kind of slow moving. I just thought it was great, man. I thought that was a, a great way to kick off the movie and to really set it apart because everything else in the DCEU has been so grounded in this is what the world would be like if Superman appeared, you know? And I thought that was a good way to go with The Man of Steel because it it's a, it's a topical film. Like it, the world that we live in with so much military paranoia if this guy just drops in and he's got all these powers what would it be like but wonder woman needed to be different right mm -hmm. so uh i thought it was a great way to start it off it as a standalone film i think it's fantastic just if if they just made wonder woman because they want to make a wonder, wonder woman, woman uh, if they just wanted to make a wonder woman movie i thought it was great and i think it's an even better part of the dceu because she is a forgotten member of the trinity of DC. In the comics, she's given credit. We saw a lot of her in the animated series. But in terms of merchandise 
where the amount that DC pushes Batman and Superman, Wonder Woman gets very little shine. And I don't think she's as much of a part of the cultural lexicon as those two. Even though people know of her, it's almost because like she's the quintessential female superhero. Mm. But people don't know her stories. They don't know her history. They don't know her villains. They don't know her powers. I think a lot of things that people know is still from the old TV show, like the Invisible Jet and all that kind of stuff, and Super Friends or something. So, okay. see, I don't know anything from that. Obviously, yeah. I'm waiting for my time. Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, but as part of the DCU moving forward, this this really does it rounds out the tone because we had dark and gritty or whatever. To me, it's just it's serious. You know, we had grounded, um, and we got little touches of the sci-fi. Well, we got a lot of the sci-fi actually with Man of Steel. Man of Steel is pretty much a sci-fi movie. Um, and, and then now we're getting fantasy and we're getting mythical and, and, a, and some magic thrown in there. And then, so, so next when we, in Suicide Squad brought, brought in a little bit of that. And when they start going more into the magical realm or the mythical realm or the, or the realm of gods and, and other beings, it's not going to be such a shift. It's not going to be such a jump because we were, we're bridging the gap slowly. Okay. Yeah. Because Justice League is next, right? Part one. Justice League is next. Yeah. And then Aquaman. Yeah, is it Aquaman and Flash before Justice League 2? Or is it just one? And I don't know League? because they've had to keep changing it because Flash can't find a director. Oh. So, yeah, Flash has had like three or four directors attached to it that uh, have left. So, so I don't know, I don't know, what I don't know what's doing. next after. <coughs> Excuse me. After I don't know either. And then there, there, at first there were rumors that Shazam or Black Adam was going to be separate from the DCEU. Mm-hmm. Or so. or not attached. Like, it's mm-hmm. just going to be made on its own, and then I guess they would bring it in later. Then there's rumors now that The Rock has said something, that there's going to be like a Black Adam tease or something in Justice League 1. Who knows? You know, and I'm fine with not knowing. I don't need to know everything. Um, they change stuff at, all the time anyway. So, you knowing today, it doesn't really mean much for next week or next month. It just, until they make it, you know, let, let me know when it's when it's, it's in the can. Um, so, so what, what do you feel like Wonder Woman means going forward into the DCEU? Uh, I think DC definitely made the right step. Um, like I said, I don't think their movies have been as bad as people, uh, the critics and everything have been saying. I did not enjoy Suicide Squad, but I actually really enjoyed Man of Steel. And Batman vs Superman was okay. Mm-hmm. But this, to me, has definitely been the best one within the universe as you were saying, as a standalone film, I really like it. Um, like I said in the other video, I think it has an argument for being top five superhero movie ever. Mm-hmm. I would definitely put it in the top ten. Mm-hmm. So, but DC is definitely on the right track. I know after Suicide Squad, I was really worried. I was, <laughs> yeah, you were yeah, really worried. I yeah. was worried. Um, I was always excited for Wonder Woman. Rightfully so. Right, right. I think you were rightfully worried with Suicide Squad because it wasn't just that the movie wasn't very good it was why it wasn't very good it was like what what did the, who edited this film mm-hmm. that was that was yeah. super worrying yeah, yeah that was worrying yeah i didn't think yeah it was one of those things that like thor or something i feel like it hasn't been it's been towards some of the not as good uh, yeah. marvel movies but i didn't watching it i didn't think of like the editing but suicide squad yeah. i was just like what it, like yeah this it didn't flow well you didn't know what it. the movie was supposed to be uh-huh. and you got the sense that the people that made suicide squad or the edited suicide squad or that produced it didn't know what it was supposed to be like they couldn't mm-hmm. decide mm-hmm. and even in the the way that they cut the trailers the tone changed the, through the trailers but then when the movie got there the movie didn't feel like the trailer it was supposed to be out a little earlier, but they had to like reshoot because they're like, "Oh, we need to make it more funny or something." Like, there were yeah. rumors that they tried to make it more funny. Rumors that they tried to make it more serious, and it's just, just the the movie that the director made. Just, just roll with it. Like, don't try to go back and make the movie something that it wasn't meant to be. If the movie is good, people will respond to it regardless. I've gone into movies that it didn't match the tone of the trailer or it wasn't what I expected and still enjoyed the movie because it was a good movie. I've gone into movies that it matched the tone of the trailer, but I didn't enjoy it because it wasn't a good movie. Just if, if the movie's good or if that's the vision that the director shot it with or that they wrote the story with, just roll with it. Like it's not, 
it's not beneficial to you to go in and try to change something that's already been made with something in mind and you're trying to go back and morph it into something else. Just don't. With the amount of talent that they had on that movie, David Ayer, Will Smith, Margot Robbie, Viola Davis, there's no reason for that film to have been so disappointing. There are parts of that that I can tell, man, this probably would have been a really cool story. But, you know, you got Jared Leto as the Joker, who I thought, has, I think he's been unfairly bashed for that. And that's an entirely different discussion on Suicide Squad. I don't want to get off into that. But Wonder Woman felt like they knew what it was going into it. They were given the freedom to shoot the movie the way they wanted to. The writing was solid throughout. And then they edited it with that in mind. And there you go. You know, yeah, yeah, it just flowed really well. It flowed, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a completely different movie than the other th previous three have been in, in the universe. So maybe that is because the whole thing is basically just a flashback. Yeah, and but I don't. It's still it was just good. Like, and, and I don't think it's films. I don't think it's better because it's an origin film. I think it's better because the story they didn't try to overcomplicate the story. It's got a the narrative is easy to follow, and that doesn't mean that the story mm -hmm. is juvenile or, or overly simple. But it's easy for people coming in to say. This is the this is the story. This is what's happening. This is the goal. <coughs> this is the result. Because sometimes in the past, in some of the movies, they try to, they gave the audience too much credit. Honestly, people when they go watch movies, the majority of people they don't want to be challenged at all. Uh -huh. BVS challenged you a little bit to try to pick up on subtleties mm -hmm. of the, the the film. It almost required a deeper understanding of DC Comics than I think the majority of yeah. people want. Um, yeah, they go just to see. They just want to see stuff go yeah, bang and they people punch each other's face. Yeah, exactly. They, they need more colors. It's funny, but people respond to color. Like people, Man, DC has been the complete opposite of Marvel in that way. And they, like I said, you can't give your audience too much credit. It's sad to say, but I'm just gonna say it. Like the majority of, of audiences and American audiences that consume these type of movies are not smart people. Um, and that's why mediocre movies continue to get made because it's the lowest common denominator. And DC, honestly. They didn't do a great job of making a, a great film with Suicide Squad or some of the other ones. Uh, and they, they didn't trust their filmmakers and they just they couldn't decide who they were making the movie for. Wonder Woman didn't have that problem and it paid off immensely for them. We've, we've established that the film as a whole was good. Let's focus on the lead, Gal Gadot, and her performance in the role of Wonder Woman. Like, kind of give me your opinion on it and I'll give mine. Now that you can talk spoilers. Yeah, that's what I was trying not to do on the other one. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, whenever she was casted or whatever, the one thing I had seen her in, well, I think the only thing she had been in at the time was a uh, Fast, whatever, Fast and Furious. Uh, she's been movies. in a couple other things. All right, well, that's the only thing I knew her from. Dad's got some movie that she's in that I think no one's ever heard of. Cause it's like straight to DVD that I found. But that's the only thing I knew her from. As we know, Fast and Furious is not, that's not one of those films that, can't judge anybody's yeah, acting quality based on exactly. Fast and the Furious. So that's not what it's was, for. And Fast and the Furious is another movie that's successful because it knows what it is. Yeah. Okay. So, there you go. So yeah. I was I was worried. I didn't. I just didn't see when I see her. I don't think Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. So as far as physical appearance, and like a lot of people said, she was really skinny. Obviously, you know, people can always bulk up, but. She was really skinny, and I didn't know like her background. She was really skinny, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know her background or anything. So. But you know, it's like a fashion model. Most fashion models are really slim, mm. like, really slim. Yeah, she was like so. she was like a pad. Like I didn't realize till later she like was like Miss Israel or something. Yeah. So yeah, so she was like, yeah, she looked like a fashion model or mm -hmm. a beauty pageant queen or whatever. And I always forget she's as tall as she is. She's like five nine, five ten. I always think she's mm -hmm. not as tall. But as far as like physical appearance, didn't think she looked the part. So I was with everybody on that. Like I said, act as far as acting credits, didn't think she had them either. And you know, it's interesting that a lot of people said that because her performance I've seen get a lot of comparisons to Christopher Reeve as Superman in the original Superman movies. Oh, and what I haven't seen him either. Uh, well, I've seen parts of him, and I wasn't super impressed. It, not nothing against like Christopher Reeve. I just. I, I I missed the window. Like I'm, I was born in the '90s. That stuff is not impressive to me anymore. And um, some of the things that I've seen newer comic book movies get criticized for, the original Superman movies did. Nobody had a problem with them. It, I think it's a lot of it's the nostalgia. It's the first one. You get away with a little bit more. Um, maybe you know it would be cool to go back and watch those and 
review them because we've never seen them. I know, I guess, as a nerd, I'm supposed to have seen them, but I have never had the like inspiration to go watch those. Yeah, they're like seventies, right? Or late seventies? Yeah, seventies, eighties. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but she's gotten a lot of comparisons to his performance, and from what I've read, what a lot of people don't remember is that Christopher Reeve started as a model. They got cast that had little to no acting credits when he got that role. He oh, turned in an iconic know. performance. Yeah, and history's uh, written, and he's, oh, he's fantastic. Uh, now, I I've never seen Christopher Reeve in any other role besides Superman. I don't know if he did a lot of other roles besides Superman, because they made four of those movies. So, that's what he's remembered for, uh, as Superman. Which is, is good, but at the same time, does it say a lot about him as an actor? Because he embodied that one role, but does that mean that he was a great actor? Otherwise, I don't know. I'm not saying he is or isn't. Gal Gadot could be the same way. The other films that I've seen her in, I thought she was fine for what she did. Mm -hmm. um, I saw her in that movie with Zach Galifianakis. Mm -hmm. What was it? Keeping Up with the Joneses or something? Something like that. Yeah. I thought she was fine. Yeah. You know? No, um, I actually enjoyed the movie. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie. It was way better than it looked mm -hmm. in the trailers. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought it was fine. And I felt like people kind of like went out of their way to dog her for that movie. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, what did you expect going in that movie? But even if she wasn't great in that, she can still be a great Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. which at this point, when I'm talking Wonder Woman, the character of the DCU, is all I care about. Because she's not going to play any other character in the DCU. She's just playing Wonder Woman. Um, so I, I always thought it was super funny in a sad way, the stuff that she got criticized for. She didn't have enough acting credit. She's a model. She's too slender. Christopher Reeve famously bulked up for that role. That was like one of the first examples of an actor going through intense training to add on muscle for a role like that. I had no idea. Yeah, no, nobody <laughs> talks about it because it, it happened, you know, pre-internet or something like right. that. So, and the thing that's funny is like Wonder Woman is drawn different ways. Sometimes Wonder Woman is drawn fairly slender. Sometimes she's drawn really beefy. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing about Wonder Woman and Superman and, some, and these characters that have super strength as a power... Their power doesn't come from their muscle mass. Their power comes from something else. Like Superman, his power from the sun. Superman can be stick skinny and still be strong enough to lift the building off the, right. off the ground. One of them the same way. She's a warrior. She's not a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And so having somebody that's slender and live and can, that can move and use her body and that has an athletic strength and that has you know a high muscle mass and little body fat makes more sense as a warrior because... I mean, you see some of the guys that are that are warriors now that are they're soldiers. They're strong, but they're not like walking around like super jacked up because you can't move that way. Mm -hmm. So it, it was so stupid. I saw a lot of people say that they wish somebody like Jamie Alexander had gotten the role. She plays Sif in Thor. I think oh, that's her name. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember Sif. Yeah. She's on that TV show on NBC now. I can't remember. Blind Spot. Blind Spot. Mm -hmm. And then you look at pictures of her, and she's like that big. Yeah, well, she's not super big. Now, she was in a lot more armor for Thor. Mm -hmm. And so I guess people just had this idea that she was bigger. What they really wanted and what guys in comments really meant when they said she was too small, her breasts weren't big enough. She didn't have big breasts, mm -hmm. and she's not white all-American. I've seen She's some. got olive skin. Mm -hmm. She's got high cheekbones. She's got dark hair. She's got dark eyes. She wasn't pale, big-breasted, with blue eyes she wasn't white basically she wasn't white enough is what I, is what when it got down to it what a lot of people weren't a fan of with the casting and they didn't want to say it or they didn't know that that's really what they meant but that's what they meant and let's just be honest about people that people were comparing based on the original tv show yeah they were comparing linda carter yeah. like linda carter was this mm. peak of human physique or something like that linda carter was a model with big breasts Oh, I don't know if she was a model. Either. I don't know if she was a model either, but like that's the look she had. She was she had the look of like a seventies pinup, mm, you know, right, and that's yeah. fine because I don't. I'm not a big fan of that TV show. Our grandmother likes that show. Um, she loves yeah, Linda she Carter. Did, yeah, she, she loves she that show, but she wouldn't be the per right person for that role now. And I know a lot of people were saying. And I think that, it was uh, smart that they didn't shoehorn it, her into this movie because a lot of people wanted to see her have a cameo yeah, yeah. in this movie, and it wasn't needed. Like let uh, let this be a new era of Wonder Woman. Okay. Yeah. I know a lot of people were saying uh, you're not shoehorning like Adam West in every Batman movie. Like this isn't Marvel. You don't need like mm -hmm. stick Stan Lee into everything just okay. to put it in there. Just like and this is another way I guess to be different as well than Marvel. God, I hate Stan Lee in the Marvel. Yeah, movies. you do. Oh, but I know a lot of people were saying they wanted Alexandra uh, Daddario. They thought she because she's got big boobs. Exactly. And what and what acting credit does she have that she just blew somebody out of the water mm -hmm. with her and acting of course, the power? Blue yeah. Eyes and 
So get get out of here. So that that's who I've seen. Those two. Uh, and no no disrespect to Alexandra Daddario. Mm. I don't know her. I don't know. I'm not a huge um, connoisseur of her work. The thing I remember her most from is she was in Percy Jackson movies. Mm-hmm. Like okay, which I didn't remember. I just know that now. Um, That's really she was good. in I True Detective. Know. Was that was that was that the name of the show? True I Detective. Don't know. Okay, fantastic show. Season one, True Detective. She plays like Woody Harrelson's mistress. But I've never seen it. I know the only scenes though. anybody remembers is when she has her shirt off. That's nothing against her, but nobody's like, man, she really gave a standout performance mm-hmm. in that role. Oh, she just blew us away. Can't wait to see more of Alexandra mm-hmm. Daria on screen. No, and now she's in Baywatch, mm-hmm. but she's wearing a swimsuit with big boobs. Cool. I love boobs. <laughs> I, think, I think a majority of people on Earth love boobs. Straight, gay, bi, male, female. I think everybody loves boobs. Like, who, who do you know that just, like, sees boobs just like, ugh, don't want any boobs in my face? Everybody loves boobs. They're soft, they're squishy, they bounce, they look nice. But that doesn't make you right for a role. Gal Gadot's one of the most beautiful women. I, I, I think she's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And she has a certain warmth and a strength to her character that fit the role of Wonder Woman. I think Zack Snyder, or whoever cast her, I'm pretty sure it was Zack Snyder, saw it grabbed onto it, and took the risk of not going conventional with the casting. And I think DC has one credit that they don't, one thing that they don't get enough credit for is they have been brave with their casting. They don't cast yeah, just no, the easy been. choice for this role and for that role. Yeah, Henry Cavill, been. I don't think a lot of people expected him for Superman. Ben Affleck, whoever saw Ben Affleck getting... And a lot of people didn't like him when they first heard it. And... Just a positive thing for them. There you go. Gal Gadot with Wonder Woman. I mean, and then putting Wonder Woman in Batman v Superman, oh, it's too much. Oh... It won't work. It's too much going on. And she was like the best thing about the movie. It hasn't worked out with them with everything. Uh, going with old boy from... Uh, what's his name? Jesse Eisenberg. Ah. Oh, as Lex yeah. Luthor. <laughs> but they they went with a different like direction for Lex mm-hmm. Luthor. That, that took balls. You know, they're going... They're pushing it more than Marvel is pushing it. Yeah, they are definitely going And that's fine. That's yes, fine. Man. Marvel has a good formula going on. They don't need to shake the boat because mm-hmm. what they're doing is working. Marvel is really smart because what they're doing is working and they're not rocking the boat. I think Gal Gadot's performance has been a little underrated, but she can really grow in this role. The thing I hope for her most is, and I'm happy that she's getting good reviews because of all the stuff that we kind of talked about with her casting. Um... I hope that she doesn't get typecast in this role. I hope she's able to have like a full career doing something else. And I hope this leads to more roles for her. But all, all I'm concerned with right now as a comic book fan is that she's nailing this role. And I think she did. I think she did. I don't know if I'll say it's underrated because I feel like that's what I've been seeing the mm-hmm. most from this. Is okay. Well, overall, it's been you know a great film. Right. But I've been seeing a lot of uh, praise for her role. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I would say it's underrated, but she definitely, she, she got it. She got it on the role. She, I don't know. Based on when I saw like, even some simple as the accent in the trailers, mm-hmm. I don't know if I was feeling it, but in the movie, I oh, thought. that was smart, dude. In the movie, it just worked. Cause it's Cause like, I've, they're I've not, never seen her they're do from a lot of, someplace else. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I've never seen her do a lot of accent work, mm-hmm. but it was smart for them to make the accent of all the Amazons similar to hers. So she didn't have to try to do something else. And then you didn't want her to stand out from the rest of the Amazons either. But mm. like you make, said, it makes sense they're from someplace else. And they even like say she shouldn't have an American accent. In the film, she's like, oh yeah, we've learned with like hundreds of languages. Yes, so. they've learned hundreds of languages, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean like, I speak yeah. English with an English accent. Exactly. I'm not English. So, uh-huh. Like, I'm Themyscirian or whatever. Yeah. So, um, it worked. It, it worked. worked, yeah. The only thing that I'm concerned about and it's a minor concern. Going forward, how does she play the role with success now that Wonder Woman is no longer naive? She was really good at playing the fish out of water, mm-hmm. someone that's very intellectually intelligent but doesn't understand the world around her and how it works socially mm-hmm. and the context of everything. She was great at that. Like Some of her facial reactions, the scene of her, and I'm, this is fine, it was a spoiler review anyway, it doesn't matter, um, where she's, they finally got her like an outfit Mm-hmm. And she's walking out with the sword, sword and the shield, yeah. and she's trying to get through that door. It's in the trailers too, mm-hmm. but just like her walking up to the door, and she kind of does this like glance up, like, okay, what is this? And she, she like, like times it right. Oh yeah. my god, hilarious! 
That was so funny. And then she's almost like a child. She's like, no, let me try it again, like, by myself. You yeah, know? Right, back so. Yeah, she, like, j- you know, jumps through. Hilarious. And then she does not want to give up that sword. Mm-hmm. She's like, you know, they're kind of, like, fighting with her. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so funny, man. So when she's, uh, when they land in London, and she's like, well, we need to be going to the war. And then she hears the baby. Mm-hmm. And she just takes a, a baby. Yeah. Those are things that is underrated acting because you are reacting to something. You have to react to stuff that you see all the time, but you have to pretend like you've never seen it before. Mm-hmm. And I thought she did it with a, a confidence that we didn't expect because that wasn't an easy role to play. And I think that says a lot for Patty Jenkins because I've, I've heard a lot of praise for her ability to get good, uh, good performances from the actors that she works with. And I think that was on display hugely with Gal Gadot. I, I wonder how it's going to be with Zack Snyder for Justice League because he's not known for getting great performances from the actors that he works with. Mm. Not that his casting is bad and not that, it, that people are bad in the roles that they play for him, but that doesn't seem to be his forte. He's a stylistic director. Okay. He's visually impressive. That's his forte. Okay. I think you saw some of his influence in, in Wonder Woman. But I'm hoping that Gal Gadot will still be able to give that performance working with another director. And I think it should be something that Warner Brothers takes into account. We need to keep Patty Jenkins involved in this DCEU filmmaking, like, mm-hmm. long term. She doesn't have to, they don't need to try to sign her to a crazy contract. You don't want to run her off because she wants to do other things, I'm sure. But they need to keep her around. Yeah, she got definitely. fantastic performances. Not only from Gal Gadot, but from everybody in the cast, and I think that's a good trans, uh, a good you know transition to some of the rest of the cast. Uh, Chris Pine, fantastic. Yeah, I thought he did. Like, you good you job. knew from the trailers that he was gonna nail it. Like that was one of the things that I was not concerned about going into this movie. I was like, man, Chris Pine's like he's in this. Okay. I was just hoping that he wasn't going to be playing Captain Kirk. Kirk. Yeah, okay. That was my concern. I was like, is he playing Cap? Is he like Playboy? Like, oh, you know. Uh-huh. I'm like running and doing all this stuff and I'm saving the day, but it's okay. I'm like, Steve, it's her movie. Mm-hmm. Man, he was so good. Like, he seemed so earnest and so natural. He wasn't Mr. Playboy. He wasn't swarmy or smarmy or whatever the word is. You know, he was, he was in, he seemed genuine. Mm-hmm. And I think it would have been really easy for him to kind of wink and hit on her and stuff like that. And I didn't get any of that, you know? In fact, yeah, it was exactly like opposite. You know, she was like, oh, you can come sleep with me. And he's like, oh, you know, we don't do that. And, and it was whatever. natural, but he was like, man, she is hot though. Yeah. Like, but it wasn't like, oh, no, I'm just, I'm not going to Yeah, he's that. like, well, no. you know if you want me to sleep with you. Yeah, he's like, like, oh, okay. you know, whatever, you know. So, uh, no, I thought you did a very good job. It was, like you said, it was just natural. I love Very like natural. Like you said, things. it was, based on the trailers, you do kind of like, oh, is he playing, you know, Captain Kirk? But I thought he did an excellent job. It's crazy because he's been Captain Kirk. He's had a couple other roles where he could have been, like, in a, like he was in the Jack Ryan movie. That That's mm-hmm. a big character. It didn't work out for him. He may, when I think Chris Pine now, I may think Steve Trevor more than Captain Kirk now. And he's good as Captain Kirk. But it just, this may be more identifiable for him because one nobody's ever played steve trevor before like this yeah it's still i guess like one movie versus three movies yeah, that, i think that's how good he was like i really do he was very good he was really good yeah he was very good he, he and gal gadot in this movie are as good as like chris evans in captain america because captain america is not my favorite marvel movie at all but he nailed the role. Like, I don't really... I never have a desire to rewatch the first Captain America movie. Mm-hmm. But damn it, if he wasn't good in it. I was like, yeah, that's Captain America. And I don't even like Captain America that much. I was like, yeah, he nailed it. Mm-hmm. I, you think, know? I think he does do a good job as well. <clears throat> and it's interesting that they kind of both play, like, different sides of Captain America. Chris, Chris uh, Pine was like the Steve Rogers part of Captain America. Whereas Wonder Woman is like, Captain America part of Captain America. And then her kind of like not knowing what's going on around her was like Captain America and the Avengers. So Yeah. Uh-huh. Um Yeah, it's very true. That's th- good. There are That's there good. are certain people in this new era of comic movies that have nailed the roles. 
Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Chris Evans, Captain America. Um, Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, Nick Fury yeah. which is kind of a cheat because the the um, the ultimate version of uh, of uh, who am I thinking of? I don't know. Of Nick Fury was based on Samuel L. Jackson, so he's kind of playing himself. Oh, really? Playing it, yeah. Oh. Like he looks just like him. Like they, he's bald. He's got the eye patch, the goatee. He he they drew Samuel L. Jackson with the goatee and in the, in the patch. Oh, I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. It's kind of a cheat, but it's like, okay, there you go. Like, you can't look any more like the character. Um, hmm. Like, Marvel's had some really good performances. Uh-huh. Ben Affleck, I'm not really ready to say, like, he's achieved that level of, of Batman because there's been so many Batman. It's 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 unfair. Like, mm-hmm. there's never been another Tony Stark. There's never been another Thor. There's never been another Captain America that's mm-hmm. mattered. Um, but... Steve, uh, Chris Evans, his struggle was going to be because he'd already played Johnny Storm. Yeah. So, Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot, and, and Chris Pine as Steve Trevor is right up there to me. I think, I thought they both did, uh, especially with Gal, just the fact that people weren't liking her so much. And I feel like she yeah, she got. I didn't hear anything about. She got so people. much shit talked about yeah. her immediately. I, I didn't hear anything. I don't remember hearing anything about Chris Pine. You know, like oh, Chris Pine. Um, I, I don't. A lot of people anything. were upset because they wanted him for uh, Hal oh. Jordan. Yeah, I know. Which I think part of the reason he didn't take that is because Hal Jordan is Captain Kirk. Is he? Yeah, he's like cocky ladies man. I'm a hot shot like. Yeah, pilot. Guess, yeah. You know, I'm not afraid yeah, of anything. Sure. I can, I take on it. I got no fear. Like he's Captain Kirk. He, I can understand completely why he didn't take that character. Because then he'd just be Captain Kirk with a green ring and no spaceship. I think he's trying not to get typecast. And I've seen him in other roles where he's been really good that haven't gotten the same attention. So, I think he made a great choice with this. I'd love to see him come back, but they don't need him. Yeah, they don't. You know, they but don't. I um, thought he did a good enough job that. If they did, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with it because he did did a good job. Now, Gray said beyond the trailer that I watch all the time, her YouTube channel, uh-huh. um, go check it out. I really enjoy her her videos, even if I don't agree with a lot of the stuff that she she says. Um, she says the stuff that, you know, I think a lot of other people don't. She had an idea for a sequel that involved the underworld and like Hades or mm-hmm. something, and that would be a way to bring him back in. Okay. Because like he escapes from the underworld. Or one woman like ends up in the underworld or something like that. That that would be cool because I love Greek mythology. Anything with Greek mythology, exploring that, I'm down for because the past couple movies that focused on that had been pure shit. So like anything that focuses on Greek mythology that's good, I'm completely for. Um and, and then what did you so transitioning to the supporting characters, what were your thoughts on the Amazons? Uh, and I guess the mascara was, as a whole. I thought it looked very. It was just a change. And one of my the friend I saw it with, he was like, "It was finally good to see like some color in a Marvel movie. I mean DC, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and a DC movie considering that Batman vs Superman was just basically all like, it was like nighttime all the time. Felt even like even when it was daytime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was. Suicide Squad takes place like in one night, so it was just. I was yeah. like, man, it's still, you know, it was flashbacks and stuff, so it was daytime, but it was good to see a pop of color yeah, it was. within the world. I thought it looked very, like, when she jumps off, you know, to the water. Not even just color, but, like, sunlight. Because yeah. there's color in Suicide Squad. Well, yeah. But it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah, like bright, neon, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. urban, it's kind of dark, yeah. And it just looked, I don't know, just, I just thought it just looked very good. Like yeah. I said, like, when she just dove in the water and stuff. Oh, like, man. I just thought it was cool. That and, little know, shot of her like swimming underneath the water. Uh-huh. I was like, man, Aquaman, here we come. Because uh-huh. that shit looked fantastic. Yeah, I'm really excited about Aquaman. Oh, I think that's my, my next God. solo one I'm excited for the most. And then when he like ship breaks, you know, he's like finally falling down. You see her like standing over the ship. Or like his plane. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm just yeah, the mic. But that part, uh, I just thought that looked real cool when he's finally like sinking down. Oh, man. So, oh, I the little looked... shot of the Germans like breaking through the barrier. When they're like first like going, yeah, uh-huh. and he, the guy's like, yeah, look at, oh man, <laughs> fucking beautiful. So I thought all that looked real good. Them, 
I guess they were in there long enough to judge their performance, but like they weren't in there for what, man, like they were, 15? They were fine. Yeah, they were just kind of there. It, they weren't bad at all, but there wasn't, like you said, there's not, it, was, it wasn't like there was a, enough to be. I ain't, get, I ain't giving out no Oscars or nothing, so. Oh, but, sorry, uh, I was cutting that yard outside. It looked like a tank rolling down the street. Um, but yeah, they were, they, they did their job. Like they were, they were fine. They were yeah. there. But you know, what was the best thing about the Amazon is that they were strong warrior people that I felt like they had an established culture, but they didn't feel like there was never a sense of like, we're strong women, like mm-hmm. girl power, nothing. Like I was just like, cool. It was kind of like the Asgardians and Thor. That's the best thing about the Thor movies is the Asgardians and, and, and being on, on Asgard. They just warrior people like this is what they do they train Mm -hmm. they kick ass they know a lot of stuff they learn and that's it you know they didn't there wasn't any like oh look how hot we are oh look how strong we are you know it was like they weren't really in their lineups to do i feel like any of that no but but i didn't get a sense of that at all uh, and it was perfect mm -hmm. i think that's something that has hurt some movies like we were just talking about that ghostbusters movie that i haven't seen i just it didn't look good and then <coughs> i came home and you were watching it one time and the, re- the response from you was not good so i was i never i skipped it, yeah, it wasn't but good. it i guess it wasn't a good movie but i don't think the overabundance of like look how cool we are we're women like it didn't help and whenever you're trying to change the narrative on the way a general audience perceives a group of people whether it's homosexuals with you know women um, people of color, um, whatever, you know, the more you push, the less receptive people are to it. Like, people have to change their opinion in steps. You can't go from zero to 60 in one jump. Like, because not everybody's a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Most people are, are minivans, you know? Mm-hmm. You have to get there slowly. You have to build. You have to show them in, in steps. And... I think that's part of the reason that this was so successful because they didn't, it was just, these are people, this is their culture, this is their history, this is their society. That was it, you know? Um, like you said, Robin Wright as Antiope was fine. Um, she wasn't really on it. She was on there for way less than I thought she was going to be. And the fact that they killed her, or they killed her, I don't know if she's dead. She's an Amazon, so you know they heal. They got that blue-ass water. I'm not sure she's she's gone. But like that's one I feel like that's one of the reasons she left. So I feel like if she was still alive, they would have showed her to try to get her to not leave. I'm like, not saying that the Amazons are hiding her. I'm just saying I'm not sure that DC's done with her. Oh. oh yeah, no, I don't okay. no, I don't think it's like they're hiding her. But, okay. but even if it's she wasn't there less than I thought. She Even if it's be. not, I mean, like, she leaves, like, the next day. Like, the, the battle is, like, that afternoon or whatever. I guess she left that night. She left that yeah, night. Okay. So, when would they have showed her, oh, she's alive? You know, I'm just not sure. Yeah. I didn't see a body. I didn't see a burial. It's a comic book movie. That's she ain't dead. Shit. And Robin Wright, you got Robin Wright to play this role, and you've been, like, showing her all the time, and that's it? I'm not buying that. Yeah, she wasn't there way less than I thought she was. <laughs> Especially because... She breaks off into a different faction and leads a different faction of Amazons in the comics. Uh, it's much more militant, uh, much more distrusting of man's world. And so what I wouldn't be surprised at is, is somehow in the comics there is a, a storyline where the Amazons like invade Earth mm-hmm. or invade like mainland America or something. And they're like combating with and then there's comic book stories where they're fighting the uh, Atlanteans. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if. <clears throat> Antiope is leading like that faction of Amazons and Wonder Woman has to come up against that okay. or you know Hippolyta is coming up against that uh, I thought Connie Nielsen as Hippolyta was good I enjoyed their interaction mm-hmm. I didn't feel like it was overly sappy I'm glad that they showed now what I'm wondering about in, in Wonder Woman is, is it one of those things where she literally like can't re-enter Themyscira or is she just like banned like by society or, is it, or even when Hippolyta was saying <clears throat> you may never come back was that like you may die? That's what I or took it Or was it as yeah. like you can't come back here? Uh-huh. Because they didn't establish that like once you leave you can never come back. They didn't uh-huh. say that. Um, so yeah, I took it as like yeah, you know, you could die out there. 
Because usually what it is is that she's just <laughs> banished. Like, she can re-enter the island. There's not, mm. like, a force field that keeps her out of it. Mm. Oh, um, it is. But the, it's just one of those things where when she comes back, it's like, you're you're no longer part of the mm. society. Um, I think that's one thing that Justice League series did really well, was showing how one woman interacts with her her mother and the society that she lives mm. in. Um, that was cool, yeah. I have expected Ares to be her dad. Zeus is her dad in the film. Uh, Zeus is her dad, I think, in the current comics. One of the things I really liked about the Justice League series is, I think in that one, her dad is actually Hades, if I'm not mistaken. Like, Hades and Hippolyta have a thing. Because in the comics, Themyscira also guards the entrance to the underworld. Not sure if they're doing that with this one, but part of the reason that they do that is, like, it's a punishment for Hippolyta because... She and Hades have, like, this love affair, and he, like, does something he's not supposed to do, and it's kind of like her sentence or something, is that she's uh, guarding the underworld um, in the Justice okay. League series. <clears throat> I don't remember any. I haven't seen that So, I kind of had suspected, <laughs> maybe, maybe Ares is her dad, mm-hmm. but Zeus being her dad makes sense if you know anything about Greek mythology, because Zeus fucks everybody, mm-hmm. um, and everything. And, like, sometimes not even as, like, a person. Like, there's one where he, like, fucks his girl as a goose. Yeah. Zeus does some weird shit. He does some weird stuff. Yeah, isn't his? He's kind of he's kind of creepy. Isn't what you call it, his sister? Well, yeah, but so, I mean, they got like a lot of. Well, when there's only like twelve of you. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, the Zeus Dodge is very. Yeah, weird man, he's nasty in that sort of way. Zeus so. is like, you don't really want to touch him because you don't know what he is. Now, the cool thing about the Amazons, I was wondering, are we going to see, like, diversity among the Amazons? You do. Like, there's yeah. black there's black mm-hmm. girls in this movie. Yeah. There's a lot of different shades, and there's a lot of different body types, too. Like, some of the Amazons are, like, we're, yeah, we're big. Yeah, yeah. Some of them, like, we're pretty small. Yeah. It was cool, man. It was I just like how, like you said, like, the whole culture. I just like how it showed, like, their training and everything. I thought that was real cool. Yes, bro. Yes. I like that there was, like, a market that she runs through. Uh-huh. I don't know what they use for money. I guess... I guess every, well, I mean, they don't, there's no other place to trade with. So I, I guess say, they just, just, that's just where they keep their right, stuff. Yeah, just rushing it. I don't know. I just liked it, man. It I, cool. I could spend, it was like Asgard and Thor movies. I, I could spend a whole movie in Themyscira and be perfectly fine. The, the architecture is beautiful. Like the spirals, that throne room. Yeah, that was oh, cool. Oh my God, man, the lighting. I can't stop raving about it. Okay, got to move on. So going through the supporting characters, the next Biggest part of the supporting characters is Steve Trevor's team. Uh, Lucy Davis is Etta Candy. Uh, I'm going to try to say this correctly. Saeed Tagmawi? Tagmawi or something? Tagmawi, something like that, is Samir. Um, Ewan Bremner as Charlie. And then Eugene Brave Rock as Chief. You didn't see them barely at all in the trailers. At least I didn't notice them. I don't so I wasn't sure all. how they were going to be. I was wondering if they were going to get... They're basically like the Howling Commandos, kind of. Um, mm-hmm. But I actually enjoyed them way more than the Howling Commandos because they felt less like caricatures than the Howling Commandos did, which is probably for the best, considering that they're more diverse. Um, and I, I liked all of them. I thought Etta Candy... She wasn't in there as much as I thought she was going to be. Mm-hmm. I was hoping <clears> there was going to be more scenes of Etta Candy and Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. We didn't get it. Yeah, she's not in there very much at She's all. not in there very much <clears> at all. I would have liked to see her in there a little bit more... But I understood because you don't want to turn into like a slapstick comedy. She got her lines in there. They were funny. Unfortunately, her best lines were already in the trailers. To me. Yeah, I almost feel like all her lines. Almost all her lines lines are in the trailers. If you've seen seen the Wonder Woman trailers, you've pretty much seen Eddie Candy in this movie. Yeah, that's why I feel like she was very, like, I think the only other scene you don't see her in is when, you know, she's on the phone with him. I feel like. Yeah. Well, I guess when she comes in at the end, mm-hmm. after the alley, alleyway fight or whatever, she mm-hmm. has like, yeah. But no, she's in. Yeah, it would have been now, I think one of the few things that I really would have liked to see was maybe a scene of Wonder Woman and her talking about Steve Trevor after he's dead. Like yeah, that, I, I think thought, that would have yeah, been a cool little moment. I thought moment. that was going to happen when she had to, she like touched the picture mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, that would have been cool to see. Um, but but I thought his supporting cast is great. They don't, they're not in there until about halfway through the movie. But once they're there, they're a, a major part of the story. I thought uh, Saeed Tegmawi as Samir was fantastic. As that high energy, like, 
I'm playing all these different characters, and I'm like kind of fast talking, charlatan kind of dude. But his his um the the scene that stood out the most, maybe in the entire movie, is when Wonder Woman is finding out more about these men that she's interacting with. Because at this point, she has a very low opinion of mankind, of of men especially. She's seen them as cowards, like they're the generals that sit back and they just like send these people off. Um, all this war. Oh, this guy's a liar. This guy, you know, he like sells to both sides. This guy's a killer. He's, he snipes people from far away. Like, mm-hmm. what's the honor in that? Um, he's like, you know, I love acting. Like, I want to be an actor. Like, that's what I love to do. But I can't because I'm brown. I was like, damn. They just came out and said it. Like, this is a problem we still have today. Like, dude can't get yeah. the acting jobs because he's too damn brown. Boy, I was like sitting there trying not to like clap my hands. And she was just kind of like, oh, like, that's a thing here? Like, she didn't say anything, and that's that's credit to Gal Gadot. But it was just like, that's the truth. Like, that's where we are right now. I can't get work. I'm a great actor because I'm fooling people in, like, real life. Yeah. That's very <laughs> like, I'm walking into German-occupied castles, and I can't get acting jobs because I'm brown. Like, I'm too dark. And dude's not even that brown. And, and the most unfortunate thing about it is that so much of this movie still resonates today with where we are with war generals that sit back and they're not at the front lines like when they decide to go to war or when they're doing this they're not the ones out there leading the army they're in the safest place they can be this guy as an actor he i guarantee you that guy's got turned down for jobs in hollywood this year because he's brown and his name is saeed tegmawi and i'm butchering that name and i'm so sorry I did try to look up how to pronounce it. I just can't say it. Um, the the Ewan Brenmer as this guy that has this love of life and that loves to sing, but he's got post traumatic stress syndrome. Mm-hmm. And at this time in, in history, that is not a thing. Like they don't even know what that's called. They used to call it shell shock. Like they don't even know he's just crazy now. Yeah. No man, he's got severe emotional trauma from people shooting at him and from him killing people. But he loves to sing, like he loves life, you know. And, and Wonder Woman, seeing her bring that back into him, is essential to that character. And they didn't overblow it. They didn't give him like the sob story or whatever. It's just that's just what it is. Like he has nightmares. He freezes up. He can't shoot sometimes. Like he still he doesn't want to pull that trigger. Mm-hmm. And you know the scene of them they they liberate the town in Belgium or France or whatever, mm-hmm. and he's just singing, man. It was beautiful. And then Eugene Brave Rock, who I didn't know was going to be in this movie at all. He's like, man, I'm an opportunist. Like, there's nothing left for me back at home because they took my land. She's like, who took your land? Him? Yeah, I really like, yeah. Boy, oh yeah, my really God. I like that part. Boy. But also the and see, Trevor's too. like, <laughs> so like, not him, but like, yeah, the white dudes back home, yeah, like, I don't have a place to live anymore because they took it. Yeah, that part of people in the movie theater, because I was oh like, my some God. older black ladies, they're like, mm. like <laughs> I'm saying, bro, because, uh, I mean, one, like, Oh, He's a Native God. American character that w- now they called him Chief, you know. Uh, so it was kind of like okay, uh, yeah. but then again, this is like the nineteen what was it, like nineteen thirteen, fifteen, twenty something like that. Yeah, Not even nineteen yeah. tens. Yeah, ni- nineteen teens, I guess. Right? It was World, World, War. I think it was fourteen to seventeen. Yeah, 14, that sounds 14, right. Yeah, so, somewhere so around there. <clears throat> this is not like they probably would call him Chief. They probably would call him something worse than Chief. Honestly, <laughs> him just being like. Man, I'm just out here trying to make some money. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care who wins because he didn't get into this, but, like, the Germans didn't take my land. You know, they didn't take my land. Like, I'm just out here. Like, there's nothing left for me back at yeah. home. No, this I is thought, what I do. No, I thought that part was real. And the fact that he's played by an actual, um, well, he's I guess he's not Native American. He's First Nation because he's Canadian. But a, a, a person of, like, Native North American descent, which doesn't happen often in these movies. Like, we still have in a struggle of people that are First Nation or Native American getting roles as First Nation or Native Americans. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, DC, for and Warner Brothers for casting a Native American in a role as a Native American. Um, They did that well with the uh, the, the, the Magnificent Seven movie, cast a Native American as a Native American. But this is still like a new thing that we're doing because... It was less than what, like five, ten years ago, that we got Johnny Depp playing freaking Tonto. Oh, yeah. So, in all kinds of face paint, with a bird on his head. Okay. Uh, last, last key point was the villains. What did you think about the villains of 
Danny Houston as the the German officer. Can't remember the lady that played Doctor Poison, and then Ares, of course. Um, I felt like the human villains were fine. Like, like I said, the whole movie as a whole was good, so they were good. They their performances didn't necessarily stand out to me, but I thought they did a good job with it. Same uh, as Ares. I thought it was I I thought it was him after um you know they had called back from Bailed or whatever town they had just yeah, yeah me too yeah and you know he's like don't go to the gala or whatever that's why I, I was like I think it might be him because I was like I felt like he sent them why not why does he want them to go to the gala mm-hmm. I just felt like something didn't match up there you know when she was on the phone he's like give me the phone or whatever I just thought it was him because he was too helpful maybe. But oh, you thought it was him from the beginning? Kind of. I just had a feeling it was him. I knew it was. I had. A, I knew it wasn't going to be Danny Houston. That was too obvious. Yeah, no, yeah, that one was. Um, well, originally I thought it was Doctor. You Poison. know, that's who I thought it was going to be. I was like, I bet it's Doctor Poison. But then I thought it was going to be him. So. But then after she killed. You know why I thought it was going to be Doctor Poison? I thought it was going to be Doctor Poison, she like because she was like the last person anybody would suspect would be behind the whole thing, because she's a woman. Mm. But I'm glad they didn't go with that because I guess it would have been too on the nose. But I thought Ares was going to be more of a transformation. So yeah, I thought I, he was going. I didn't know he was going to look like that actor when he became Ares, like when he revealed yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, but I thought uh, I thought it was cool. I remember you said before it came out, a lot of people thought it was going to be Ares, and you didn't necessarily think it was. So they went with. I feel like Ares isn't that like her arch nemesis. He's one of them, yeah. So he's one of the most recurring because you can't really kill him. Going with that as the first, I guess, big bad guy, or it was kind of the right move. I feel like because I guess a lot of people don't know, like casual fans don't know him as like a you know he's a god in mythology I don't think and casual everything. Casual fans even know Greek mythology. Anymore. Yeah, so but I don't know a lot, but I know he's a god. And like it, it kind of does bother me because whatever, like Ares so. has become like the go-to bad guy villain and he's not necessarily i think it's because like war is bad but war is also right. fought for different reasons now than he used to and be. he's not even just about like the bad side of war isn't he just literally like he's just like war. he's other gods too right or it's, it's just like war primarily like war stuff. yeah i guess Ares is like a god or something that's like a necessary evil but whether or not you believe it's a necessary evil at all is, is kind of the debate um <clears throat> but like he said he's like i don't even make them fight he's like i just give them ideas and they do it on their own and so he was basically like I'm not impressed with humanity. Like, I want this to end. Like, I'm not... Im- like, they're ravaging the world around them. Mm-hmm. And so I guess he uses war more as a tool to achieve the goals that he wants. It's just like, I don't know why he's so enamored with this humanity thing in the first place. It's not really... It was almost like a... Like a like a, a biblical, like, Lucifer mm-hmm. tone of, like... That's what I'm I don't think he's necessarily war as in, like, he is doing himself. I think he's... I felt like a teacher or something told me one time. He's like more of a war as in like more a tactician and everything. No, like, that's Athena. Oh, is that Athena's what is? like tactics of war. Okay, that's what it is. He's like... Is he? I could have sworn he was like something more than just regular war. But anyway, as far as I... It, there's always like more into it than what people uh-huh. boil it down to. And then there's also like the context and then it depends on like what version you're reading. But what I understand that's is true. Athena's like strategy and tactics. Okay. Ares is like... I guess almost like the bloodlust of war or like uh, the passion of war and conflict and stuff like that. But okay. I, I could be wrong. But I thought it was, uh, I thought he was a cool bad guy. Them fighting at the end, I'm mm-hmm. glad. When I was watching it, I was like, I kind of want to see some, because you know her sword gets destroyed. So I kind of want to see some. Sword that was surprising. I was kind of surprised to see the sword just like, yeah. Like, okay. But when he transforms, stuff, I was like, all right, this is what I really want to see mm-hmm. with like, you know, the metal armor or whatever fusing together. So I thought it was the final fight and stuff. It was really cool to see as action. And everything. It was just cool. You know, you're just throwing stuff at her. She dodging. Like forming, like, yeah. blades and stuff out of scrap metal. So, so yeah, as far as, cool. like, yeah, as far as villain stuff, I thought they did. I would have liked to see, I would have liked <laughs> to see a little more ornateness to his armor. Just because that's how he's usually, he's got, like, this really ornate, like, almost, like, dark, muddy, purple armor or something like that. Like these glowing red eyes. I would like to see a little bit more of that, but I'm fine with it. Like, like you said, I thought the villains were fine. Mm. Nothing to, like, write home about. Not, not as good as General Zod or any of, or, um, what was his, his female, like, lieutenant in Man of Steel? I can't remember her name. Feora. Oh, Zod and, she and Feora. Really, yeah, she was really cool. Awesome. But, Suicide Squad, like. Uh, yeah. 
I don't even think they were as impactful as Lex Luthor or anything like that. Um, no, they, but they were of, they yeah. were fine because they didn't pull focus. Mm-hmm. Like Lex Luthor pulled focus. Like he pulled people a little bit out of the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, they they moved the story along as they should. Mm-hmm. I actually would have liked to see more of Doctor Poison and the general uh, whatever his name is, mm-hmm. Danny Houston's character because they seemed like they kind of had fun with those roles. I did not expect to see the scene of them like laughing behind the door <laughs> when they threw that gas in and the gas mm-hmm. mask. That was some evil shit, but. They didn't really have much to do, but what they did with it was good. I would have liked to learn more about her backstory, Professor yeah. uh, Prince, uh, uh-huh. Doctor Poison's uh, character. But like I said, they didn't need to pull yeah. forward. Like everybody in, in every movie doesn't need to get like a the back, whole yeah, thing. Backstory and everything. Yeah, so. they kept the focus on Wonder Woman, Steve Trevor, and that was what they needed to do in this movie, and it worked for them. Um, I thought you know it was a little bit predictable in that regard, but I was happy with it because. If the if you have to sacrifice a secondary or tertiary character to make the movie what it needs to be, by all means do it. <clears throat> to wrap it up, you know, I, I guess one of the things I came away with, I like the fact that her powers are still a little bit undefined and they seem to to kind of change and grow as she grows more confident with them. And you could see that in her fight against Ares, like she's pushing herself. Mm-hmm. You saw that at the beginning where because I was like, why is she looking like she can't jump that? At the at the beginning when she's going to get the armor and the god killer sword. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was, yeah. I was like, why is she looking at like, she don't uh-huh. know how to get over there. And she kind of like had to measure back, like, can I make that? And then she, you know, she kind of does like the test. And then she goes for it. And she gets there and then she starts falling and she doesn't uh-huh. know that she can like break into the rock. Uh-huh. And then each, you know, the first time she has to like really tap yeah, into it. And then she's just, that was cool to see her expand her powers. She doesn't even know she, she has powers then, right? I guess not, because they, she doesn't they, know that she's, like, stronger than the average person, because she's never met the average person. But she doesn't and, know that she's stronger than the average Amazon, either. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sure. She, yeah, she, they tell her, like, it's the sword or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, she didn't tell her until she was like, you know, you're not like us. But she doesn't know yet. She doesn't know she but can she, jump far Yeah, but anything. she didn't even question. That's something I remember seeing, too. She didn't, like, question. Like, what do you mean I'm not like the rest? It just, like, kept moving on, which I, I guess I thought she fun. meant that because... <clears throat> I assume that she didn't ask because she thinks that she's like made from clay, and she's a she's a child, and there are no other children on the island. Oh yeah. yeah. So okay. I just assumed that's probably why she doesn't ask questions because she's she was like a gift from the gods. She was like brought to life by the gods. She doesn't know yeah, she's like so a she... literal baby. And, and so, you know, I saw somebody else. You know, like another review mentioned. Well, it's stupid that she like she knows how babies are made. And she just like never put two and two together. But if you've been told something from childhood, you don't question that shit. Like, there's all kinds of things that people are told from childhood that don't make any sense, that they believe. Like, racism. People should know, oh, that doesn't really make any sense, but they've been taught that so that they they believe it. So how do... So all Amazons are just born... I don't think they're... Uh, in, in most of the comics, always, like, when they're on the island, they're immortal. They're like old Greek gods. Like, you can be killed physically, but if you just like are off doing your own thing, like you'll never die. Okay. So they probably don't. It's just the same ones from. In oh. some of the comics, they reproduce by um, <clears throat> like luring men in, like in, in ships and stuff. Mm. They sleep with them and then they kill them. Uh, and then all the male and actually like it gets kind of dark. Like a lot of the male children, they just kind of like either send off and they kill the male children, and they keep the, the the female children. Oh. Some of the comics, they have men on the island as like slaves. Mm. Um. But I don't think that's like the way to go. Um, so I'm not sure how they go with this one. Obviously, they've been around a long time because Apollo and Antiope fought in those ancient wars. Some of them, obviously, some of the Amazons obviously look older than other Amazons. I don't know if they just age very slowly. I don't know if that's just the way they look. And in some of the comics, uh, what happens is they were the souls of battered uh, women that were like killed by men or like, killed due to like men's mistakes or something like that. Um, or like victims of war or something <clears throat> and then they're like pulled out by like Aphrodite and Athena and stuff like that and they're given like physical form and they're made the Amazons. There's so many okay. different origins so that might explain why some look older than the other ones. Okay. And Hippolyta and Antiope are the first ones that get pulled out so that's why they're the leaders. But like I said I like the fact that her powers are are still well in the movie they're still new to her. Now it will be because in Batman v Superman she was like zooming all over the place. Like and she's still yeah she's still not flying at all. See, right. Batman v Superman was like, well, she can't fly. But I was like, you didn't see her, like, not fly? She's jumping, but she doesn't have a... She's not... It's not necessary that she fly in that fight. 
it's not like Doomsday like is hovering in the air. She can't get to him or something like that. So there's because Doomsday can't fly. So there was no reason for her to fly in that fight. Superman overlies on flying because he's not a trained warrior. Superman's key move is fly straight at you, ram you through something. There's like a scene where she like kind of jumps. If she can't fly, that's fine. I would like for her to be able to fly. Maybe she'll probably probably But at the, at the end of the movie, that little last uh, shot, is she flying there? You can't I, really tell. It almost like it was a jump, but yeah, like you said, you can't really tell. So, But Ares can fly or hover. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're assuming that as a god or a demigod, she'll get to that point eventually. Yeah, I figured though, just unlocking Justice League part. Something's going to happen and maybe she'll like... Oh, right, I'm and maybe she does. In this one. And I'm curious... <clears throat> Has she still been testing her powers after World War One? There's so much time between World War One and it's been a hundred years. Yeah, and so you know that she kind of like leaves mankind or whatever. But when does she do that? Does she do it after World War One? Because at the end of this movie, you know, she kind of like gets off work and is in the Wonder Woman here. Like, where's she going? Is she going to meet Bruce Wayne? Mm-hmm. Is she like? Does she still kind of operate under like a low key setting? Has she still been pushing her powers? I don't know. Um, but I like the fact that they're not like, this is what she can do. For example, in the new comics, the bracelets that she wears are basically shackles to control her power. When she gets pissed off and those shackles come off, like, it's all hell breaking loose. In most of the comics, she can fly, but not to, like, the same speed as Superman. She's fast, but she's not as fast as, like, Superman or Flash or something like that. She's kind of like, but she's a better warrior than both of them. Like, her instincts and her reactions are better. So, you know, it, it kind of... It balances out, and that's why she's so strong because she's so well balanced. Like she's, and she's got more compassion and hope than Batman. You know, um, that's why she's such a vital part of that team of that of that trio. And so, what are your hopes going forward for Wonder Woman as a, like a sequel and then the DCU? Um. Like, I guess, as a sequel, I'm not expecting a standalone, or not standalone, but like a sequel to that story anytime soon. Just the fact that I haven't seen, they already have a list to what, like 2020, whatever, and I haven't seen like one of them. They've a sequel. I don't know if they have a release date for you, which is fine, because I no, I'm they sure. put too much pressure on people when they Yeah, and I'm sure they have. They're <clears> definitely <throat> planning on doing one, but <clears throat> my thing is, I don't know when they'll come, so I'm not like, oh yeah, I need a sequel right now, I guess. Because we're also going to be seeing her in both Justice Leagues. Mm. And who, you know, with so many other ones, she might be making cameos. So, yeah. I'll definitely. Well, we'll definitely I like, I like that, <clears throat> that DC has established. What? Like the cameo thing. Like, this is the world they live in. If Batman's doing something, Wonder Woman may stop by. Cool. Mm. I'm not necessarily like, oh, I need the sequel in, you know, two or three years. Um, but my hopes. For the whole universe, I mean, it wouldn't happen for two or three years anyway because they're finishing up Justice League, then there's Justice League Two. I don't know when they would even. Yeah, I guess that's kind of. My, in. I guess that's kind of a point. I don't know when. I feel like it'll be years before we get that. Probably. But like I said, since we're having two Justice League movies, I'm gonna be seeing there for two more movies. Mm-hmm. Obviously, mm-hmm. she's gonna be sharing the screen time, but I'm not. Not like I'm gonna be missing this character for a super long time. With the sequel, do you jump? right to modern times or do you do another period piece i, I kind of like the period piece like if they did something like wonder woman in the 70s or something uh, wonder woman in vietnam like maybe why she doesn't get involved anymore or yeah that's a tough one um, is she around in world war ii or or does when world war ii happens she's like i'm done like how did this happen again worse than the first one because that's a good good question because one of the things they did well is that they they didn't really portray any side better than the other like, Danny Houston's character is a villain because he's a villain. He loves war. He wants there to be war. He wants conflict. But the Germans themselves are like, man, we're ready for this to be over. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> this is the best way to end it. Let's get this. Let's get out of this. Mm-hmm. At the end, everyone's like, oh, thank God it's over. Like, hugging each other. Everyone's excited that war is over. So when World War II happens, she's got to be thinking, are you fucking kidding me? Like, Ares isn't even around anymore. They just, and she's like, he's right. They did this on their own. Like, the weapons are better now than they used to be. Like, we have to write laws to be like, you can't use poison gas anymore. You can't, like, you can't take innocent villages. Because that was something that people were doing. So... Yeah, that's a very good question. You I might, could see that. I could see maybe World War II being the reason she's like, I'm no longer a part of this. I don't want, like, don't come to me for help. 
because it makes sense that somebody that knew of her from World War One would come to her in World War Two and be like, "Hey, we need you." And she's like, "Nope, I'm not going to be a weapon. Like, I'm not helping you. I'm not picking sides. Get out of my face." Because she didn't really pick sides in the first one. She met Steve Trevor first, and she was like, "I'm trying to kill Eric." She wasn't yeah. like, "I'm trying to help the United States or whatever." Mm-hmm. She wasn't even in the United States. She was in London. Yeah. She was where the war was. So oh, that's, that's a very good question. I thought they did a good job with this period piece, but since it was like the origin story, it's probably different than if they're going to do you know another period piece. Mm-hmm. It might be one of those things people are like, or they don't want to exactly uh, copy Captain America because he wants straight you know, but that that is his story because he wakes up from the ice in already that time if I remember right. correctly. Yeah. So it might just be wherever I guess they're going, whenever they do a sequel, where the universe is at that time, mm-hmm. I guess. Do you rather see it like match up with present time? I think I'd rather do a present time okay. one. But if they cool. decided to do like you know something else, they did a good job with this one, so I'm sure they would do a good job. It's one of the few times I've been able to say in regards to the DCEU, and I'm always going to be a little bit more nervous because I'm more emotionally invested in DC characters. That's what I grew up with. That's what my dad loved. That was my first experience into not just even comic books or superheroes, but like fiction. You know, watching Batman the Animated Series, and you know, this is what I like Marvel, but I love DC. Okay. You know, it's like it's more a part of like, and and being the DC characters are more like mythologically like heroic, and I love Greek mythology. I'm more a fan of that storytelling, okay. whereas Marvel is like very relatable and very human, very flawed. Okay, yeah, yeah. Not that DC characters aren't aren't flawed or relatable, but it's just different. I feel confident in Patty Jenkins, Gal Gadot, and even the writing on another Wonder Woman movie. Like, I'm not worried. It's kind of like, like, you would rather see it in the present. I wouldn't mind seeing something else in a different time period, but I don't care. Like, I believe that they'll get it right now. And yeah. I haven't been able to say that, really, in, in, a, in a minute. I thought Man of Steel was cool. I thought I, they I, yeah, I thought it missed the boat a little bit with Batman v Superman, especially the theatrical cut. Suicide Squad was like, what are y'all doing? I'm cool with this. Like, I don't, I'm not worried, and I'm excited to see what the future holds. Um, that was a spoiler review. If you guys have any any questions or anything else that you feel like we missed or something that you, you caught that you thought was interesting, I didn't really catch Easter eggs, but I wasn't really, I was so focused on just everything as a whole. Uh, feel free to hit it up in the comments. Definitely, you know, if you have any good topics that you'd like to hear us address, we'd love to keep the conversation going, keep it friendly in the comments. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, do all that stuff so YouTube actually knows that people like content that's in a little bit longer form. I know our videos are long, but we like leading the discussion more of like a podcast style. If you guys have any suggestions on that as well, please let me know uh, and definitely hit us back up. We'll be producing more videos here, either myself and hopefully with more guests as uh, time goes on. Wonder Woman, solid thumbs up from us. Uh, can't wait for the sequel. See you guys in the next video. Take care.